We are back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Team Fight Tactics Galaxies OCE and a finals presented by Juked. I'm going to nail that every single time. It's a long <laughs> title. We got it. And uh, luckily for us, we've got a lot of games left. Three more games of Team Fight Tactics. Uh, and it's been really exciting so far. We're going to take a look at all the standings and stuff uh, at some point, but I'm going to throw some questions out there first. I'm going to throw this one to That's Primal. Uh, what what stands out to you in our first two games? Like what, uh, when you just think of the games we've seen overall, like what jumps to your mind first? Um, yeah, so I think particularly in the last uh, game that we watched, I think it was Lobby C, um, mm -hmm. how strong it can be if you actually lose streak. Um, because we saw two players, Sleet and uh, Sphinx, both lose streak, but they got perfect items, so that enabled them, in Sphinx's case, to actually take a first. Um, so it, it's, it's going to be interesting to see whether there's some players who opt more for that, particularly in these really tight lobbies where everyone is entering endgame, but items are going to make the difference. Okay, interesting. How about how about you, Becca? We're going to take a look at the standings, but while we do, uh, I, I would be curious about your take on that. Uh, this is just kind of mean, but I never <laughs> do very well with cybers unless I super high roll, so it's kind of uh, making me question myself and um, wonder where I can improve my cyber gameplay to just like top two or top three uh, with it. Everybody's got a comp like that. That's just like yeah. your, your kryptonite, you know? Yeah. Um, so looking at the uh, standings overall, um, anything surprise you right now, Keen? I don't think there's anything particularly surprising. I, I think most people expected the NA players to come out strong. I'm glad uh, Ubo came out and represented OCE well in the last one. But I think yeah. most of the players, like we said going into the broadcast, that Grand Vice was expected to do well. So uh, I think it's shipping out about as expected so far. All right, sounds good. Well, uh, we will be looking at uh, Lobby B for this next uh, particular game here. And again, uh, keep in mind the points uh, you can see on the right side of your screen there, just eight to one, simple, simple can be. Um, and so the benefit is that there's no big drop off between fourth and fifth and first and second. So you can, the, the catch up ability, I think is, if that's a word or phrase, I don't know. I'm a caster, I can invent this stuff. The catch up ability. Uh, these lobbies are a little bit higher where if you do have some of those rough games early on you can kind of make that run to get back into it to maybe be one of those top eight players for tomorrow but on the other hand for players like simple plan kind of way down at the bottom it's getting really rough now you've had two pretty unfortunate games and you need to basically win out to uh keep your kind of hopes alive at this point but the beauty of tft is that you can do it Definitely can. I, I i've definitely been in these tournament spots where I just feel like I have to do it. And I'm like, wait, I can. I can do it. And some people might low roll. I still have a chance. Um, I think TFT tournaments are super exciting. You never know who's going to come out on top. And you've had runs in tournaments that I've casted where it's like multiple first <laughs> seconds in a row. I've, I've seen you do it. So Yeah. It's, yeah. So it's, it's so fun. Oh, man. This is making me want to play more. But I know. <laughs> learning from oh. the tournament. This is this is one of the things I think, you know, I know from casting a lot of stuff. I know uh, some of you have done some of these shows in the past as well. But this is the real, the agony of the, the caster is that seeing these games just wants to make you, it just makes you want to go play it. And yeah, I bet you people <laughs> in the chat just started playing TFT because they're watching these games and they're like, I want to play that comp. I would, I would. If I were in chat right now, I mean, I am in chat, but I would definitely <laughs> be playing. No, don't. You shouldn't be in chat. It's a dangerous place to be right now. No. <laughs> I think we're going to jump in with, here we go, a lobby number B jumping on board with Sphinx. We'll catch up with Keen a little bit later after the game for some more analysis. And it is a binary star. So in case you're not familiar with this, this is one of the new-ish galaxies, I would say. But you're only allowed to put uh, two completed or two items on each character. So that limits a lot of what you can do. But you can also kind of see benefits. It allows you, if you're playing something like cybernetics, to spread your items around a little bit more in a more meaningful way that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. So I'll throw this question out to both of you right now, and, and I'll, I'll send it over to uh, to Primal first this time. Uh, what comps do you think are uh, do a little bit better on this galaxy, or at least can handle the restriction better? Uh, I really like Cybers on this, um, and Cybers is my favorite comp personally, so I love it when I get this galaxy uh, for the exact reason that you said. You know, Vayne only really needs two items, ideally Infinity, Edge, or Giant Slayer and Last Whisper. Uh, and then there are multiple other units who can carry, uh, who can use items well. So I, I like Cybers. Uh, and I think Sorcerer-based comps are pretty good for similar reasons, where you don't really need to three-stack like a Syndra, for right. example. Um, if you have a Nico with you know, just a War Mogs and GA, for example, and you have a Syndra with blue buff and one damage item, you'll do just fine. 
How about you, Becca? What do you think? Um, I, I agree with everything Primal said. Um, Astro Sniper fits also does very well on this galaxy. All you really need on Teemo is the um, blue buff Morello. True. Yeah, and yeah, you, you always end up prioritizing the the Teemo, and I think that's just enough. Um, what else is what else is really good on this? Uh, you know, what's not as I would never play on this galaxy is the Slash Brothers. Mm, yeah. <laughs> It yeah. does feel like if Yi is missing any of those three units, he or three items rather, he starts to fall off pretty hard. Or at least he can get dealt with much easier, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's not nearly as impossible to kill. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another comp that's actually not nearly as good, but still viable is mech, actually. Um, because the thing with mech is you kind of want a slot committed to QSS. Um, so you're, you're not vulnerable to Zephyr, which means you only have one slot left over. Um, right. Or either, I mean, ideally a defensive item, right? So um, I, I think Mech, relatively speaking, loses more power than some of the, the other comps, uh, but still, still solid. Yeah, I mean, you can you have a chance to maybe put some more items on like a Shaco in that case, you know, on, on this galaxy. So you can have the Victor, the Mech, and the Shaco sometimes a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. But it is rough. Um, I would almost, you know, on Binary Star, maybe I'm wrong for thinking this. But uh, I would almost prioritize a healing item on mech over some defensive stuff. Like the new hand of justice, I think is fantastic on mech. So on binary star, I'd be tempted to try like QSS uh, hand of justice and see if I can just sort of like either extra damage or heal my way through a lot of fights. Mm -hmm. that's I really like oh yeah, I, I totally agree. Hand of justice is it's arguably best in slot and mech um now with the changes and uh i was just gonna say i actually really like this red buff commit by sinx um yeah. i guess he he's he's saying okay we're either running cybers or jinx from the spot so might as well make it probably i guess what do you think becca you think cybers because he already has a few or two and a leona on bench i think he just has both of them open and that's where i like to be or you, you just don't feel like you're gonna well he's not picking up the fiora so probably right i think I'm he has two or two. Oh, he does? Okay, yeah. you're, right, you're right, you're right. Okay, yeah, I would just keep this open. I mean, this feels so good. It's always Cybers or Blast or Jinx. But I think, wouldn't you also prioritize Cybers? I just, ah, I don't mm. know. I think I've just been burnt by too many Jinx comps. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I know, I know how you feel. I think Jinx kind of wants three items. Like you can do well with Jinx, but you, you don't really have. I mean, if I guess if you have GP stacked and you have Jinx and you have the hit Aesol, you're fine. But you know, it's two five costs, not really reliable to hit. You know, yeah. so I agree. I think Cybers is more consistent, um, and maybe he gets the glove off Carousel since he's in um, last ish place right now. Yeah, like I was saying, I I mean. I haven't had as much success with Cybers as I would have hoped, but watching these players, it seems like Cybers is just really good. I mean, I, th I think Cybers is is great. And like, it took me so long to feel like I finally, you know, is semi-competent in playing the comp to where I can like, you know, if I play Cybers, I can be feel, I can feel pretty comfortable that I'll top four if I play it well. Um, it, it's still tough. It's easier now that you don't have to like play the find the echo game. Um, now that you can hit six Cybers earlier, but I think my main concern in this lobby would be like, how many people am I going to be contesting if I go Cybers, you know? Mm -hmm. Because this, everyone sees binary star and they immediately think snipers. So mm -hmm. how many people are actually doing it in the lobby? And I think uh, when you get to like three, one, you know, stage three basically is when the scouting really needs to begin and you need to figure out if you can conceivably play it. Cause you can be like one of two Cybers players in the lobby, but if there's more than that, I feel like it gets really risky. Yeah, I think uh, I think Sphinx is in a really good spot to go Cybers, um, just because he he's probably gonna get Carousel priority here. Um, he already has a bow. Um, he already has uh, a two star Fiora and a Leona on bench. So I think he he should be looking to just force Cybers, or I'm not I guess not really a force from that point, but play Cybers, um, and then everyone else will have to sort of react to that. One thing I love that he's been doing in this early game is that by focusing on the Chrono and the Caitlyn early, he's been taking good losses, right? So he's he's decided to go on a loss streak, but he's been playing his board in a way that he's guaranteed to kill at least like one champion on the other side, and so take less damage than he would have otherwise. So I think he's handled this loss streak extremely well. Goes for the sword immediately. Whoa. Not surprised. Well, yeah, it looks like if, he, if he prioritizes the Giants, oh, well, Giants is just oh. good. So maybe he's still thinking Rebels then too, because like Giants <laughs> Red Buff is a good Jinx build. 
Yeah, but yeah. dialogue is just really good hmm. in general. Especially, True. yeah, like I said earlier, I think vanguards are just not as prevalent. So yeah, I guess the giant slayer is great, and it could become and and if you if you have too many swords, you can always make like a GA, and there are other options for you to make. True. So, so it's a good pickup. Yeah. We'll see what he does with it. Um, meanwhile, uh, no. we're board with your, uh, it's your teammate, Delicious Milk. Yeah. Just the way he moves his um, units around just shows me. <laughs> so, what, so you so tell us then give us give us the insider information what is delicious milk's state of mind right now <laughs> well okay maybe maybe i don't have a, as good of a read but he seems maybe he's <laughs> always doing this but he seems so nervous <laughs> moving his nico around like am i gonna play this sometimes i wonder if it's if it's like the incredible hog philosophy where it's like my secret is i'm always angry <laughs> Milk is the best. Um, there was <laughs> recently on Twitter of all the um, some of the TF2 content creators mm -hmm. um, as Woody the Pooh characters, and Milk <laughs> is pure. And I was like, this is the best comparison ever. Milk is definitely Eeyore. There's no, there's no question. He's the perfect Eeyore. So. He's got the, the Eeyore attitude. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, it's it's an eighth, guys. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you get an early dragon's claw, and you're like, oh, it's an eighth. So yeah, that's true. Like, like, yeah, like, yeah. Oh God, I have to slam that the feels dragon. Super bad. Man, it's an eighth. It's just a good egg. So you, you already know that's what he's thinking, right? And then he's yeah. like, yeah. like Candyland. I've got the perfect items and copy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, I don't know what you do if you're playing Binary Star and one of your items is a dragon's claw <laughs> early. <laughs> I guess maybe he he started cloak, which already sucks, and then he hit another cloak, and he's like, "Well, oh, I gotta make this uh, Am I gonna make this disarm? <laughs> yeah. Like, what else can you do? A shrug, guess I'll die emote. But it's like, no, it's it's way too early in the game to really figure it out yet. You know, he could make a he could make a Titan's Resolve. That Poppy could be a mech someday. It could. It yeah. could. You never know. I don't want that dragon's claw on my neck either. No, no, no. You put that on something else, but uh, like maybe I don't know, like a shakeout or something. Who knows? But yeah. But, but this uh, is this this is rough. I, if I'm him, I'm already thinking. Okay, I need to think about playing for top four if I don't mm -hmm. hit good items here, true. right? Because he alternated win loss. He doesn't have good items to start. Um, so it's gonna be. I'm gonna be really interested to see where Melk finishes. We'll check back in with him later too, because um, he'll have to get pretty creative from this point. Depending on what you right here. Let's go, Milk. I believe in him. <laughs> I mean, so uh, it's it sounded like that was one of those like movie moments where like the dog was agreeing with the character. It's like, yeah, that's right, Milk. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, bark. Yeah. My 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 dog took offense at the uh, play for top four comment. So oh, I see. That's right. Yeah. It's it's a first, first or nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's first, all or nothing. All right, we'll see what he picks up. Uh, oh, no, another bow? Come on, man. Hey, uh, the blade shows him. <laughs> if he blade will choose him. Yes. Hey. <laughs> See, oh he should have saved one of those uh, Negatron cloaks for uh, Hurricane. And go, uh, RP uh, Hurricane? No, I'm just kidding. But The Slash Brothers on... Um, on... Uh, Fire Star. Fire Star. <laughs> yeah. Bold. It's, it's bold. The Slash Brothers on Binary Star with the Dragon's Claw. Yeah, that sounds like a top four to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a first. <laughs> you do, though. I mean, it's... Okay, I, I was about to say, maybe you pick up the Cassiopeia and you just try to play for some sort of, like like that's Primal was saying, some sort of top four variation. He's got no, like, no tiers or anything like that, though. So he can have a, maybe a strong front line with the Vanguard, but... And he's got Mystic with, like, Bard Cassiopeia. Like, doesn't... It sounds like... It doesn't sound great. But what do you do at this point? It's it's such a rough start for Delicious Milk. Honestly, I think I look to all in, um, maybe at at seven, um, okay. and just and just from, and spike from there. Because one of the things about playing from this position is you're just on a different economic timing than a lot of other people. So sure. if you all in early, um, you might be able to just streak to top four based on the fact that you're strong before everyone else is strong, and then you just play whatever the game gives you. Um, but yeah, it's it's this is a rough spot, both in terms of itemization and and the units he's happening to hit. Yeah, I like the Chronos now though, um, with the van four vanguards this early. I mean, the fights are gonna be a little longer, so the Chrono has a little more value. Nice. At least he hit something. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it might be enough to stem the flow of HP at least, you know? Yeah, he Which definitely has kind of... Cassio already, just because, I, I mean, I think he's too, just too far from those items. Yeah. Like, have any of the really core items for blue buff or Morello? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure. One potential out is he can get a fizz off carousel, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just saying, that's, that's always an option. Yeah. Yeah, that's the first pick. That, it is a good out. True, right. true. So that could completely change the game, but that's the only thing I can really think of. Like, and he's at 54 HP. Like, it's he's definitely not taking as much HP loss as we've seen some other players take when they go uh, fast eight today. But uh, so it's it's not unsalvageable, you know. Mm -hmm. But it is rough. Yeah, yeah. I think the thing that actually hurt him uh, was he won a round. I think it was three five, maybe. I'm oh, sorry, mm -hmm. two five, um, which hurt his loss streak. So I'm sure at that point. Um, that's that's kind of frustrating, right? Because ideally you're yeah, in the spot, but you have a ton of gold, right? Yeah. And so Delicious Milk comes into this too, as as perhaps one of our most decorated players in the tournament as well. He won uh, Giant Slayer Series Season One. He won the Cloud Nine Nebula uh, qualifiers just a week or two ago. So he's had like a, a really really strong year of uh, tournament TFT. So uh, I would be I would be really surprised if he didn't make top eight, honestly. He had mm -hmm. two pretty good uh, game ones, but he kind of needs to keep that up, right? Because he got like, what, fourth twice in a row? So mm -hmm. a bottom four year would hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll say this for Melk. He, he's a player who definitely knows how to play from low HP. Um, you know, going even back to the days when he was forcing mech and oh, yeah. getting items off carousel. So if there's anyone who can turn it around, it's him. True. But this tournament is super interesting because um, normally fourth, fourth doesn't seem like bad tournament placements, but there's 24. There are 24 players rather than six. Mm -hmm. so it's oh it's it's a little scary just going right. with yep. or like about slightly above average scores uh, oh so he goes for the tier and that's probably a good idea because of the vanguard start that leaves you open to possibly rolling into you know like we were talking about Timo, uh you know cassiopeia maybe let's see mm -hmm. what he's go for yeah i'm really interested to see when he chooses to roll oh. um so he's got RFC, so he could just find a Cassiopeia, and, and I know you really want the Merlin Namakana. The worst comes to worst, he could go for, like, blue buff RFC Cassiopeia, maybe. Mm -hmm. I think without the Morella, you really... I don't think you can play it, just because, I mm -hmm. mean, the Cassio doesn't do enough damage to kill anything right it away. Great. Yeah. That's what really keeps them down, like, yeah. from um, coming back. Yeah. All right. Now, Zugrug's having a much happier game. All right, already has Fior 2 with Redemption. He hit his last Whisper just now. So um, he has a clear direction, good golds, um, has a supporting Cybers. So this is a pretty comfortable position to play from. And Cybers is one of the best comps on this map too. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It handles the restriction a bit better. Wow, uh, look at the items for the Teemo on a Hewn side of the board already. Oh boy. Oh man, watching Teemo just eat your front line is so tilting. Yep. I know what else deal. can you really do at this point, though? Like, that's an early Teemo with an early blue buff and an early Morella Namicon. Like, it's... it's, And, and a Bard, too. So not only does Kiyun have a strong board and he's winning, but he's also generating a pretty good amount of Neeps as well. Ooh, that Aurelia hits huge, though. When that when the Teemo... Um, when, the, when the Teemo doesn't obliterate your front line, but then your front line is just walking towards Teemo, and then he's <laughs> just pushing them back over and over, and you're like, oh, no. Yeah. Just, just end, just end the round, please. Like stop. Sad, the saddest thing. Yeah, it's so frustrating. So, so I think. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna talk about probably exactly what you were gonna talk about. But you're the better player, so you talk about it. No, 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 no. <laughs> we're all you equal here. Well, um, I, I, was gonna... <laughs> uh, I was just gonna say, I think from this point, um, Zagar is probably looking to just go eight at four three. Um, and roll it down there. And he's likely going to hit six Cybers at 4-3 because he already hit the Aurelia, which is the hard part. Um, and the nice thing about Lucian is Lucian 2 with Last Whisper is basically as effective as Vayne with Last Whisper, because ev arguably even more because he has Blaster. Um, so his item distribution is really, really good, uh, which is something that feels great as a Cyber player because the two, two of the things that I think are hardest to get right with Cybers are A, item placement, like making sure you never have to sell a Cyber to free up an item, and B, understanding the unit interaction between the different cybers. Um, like you want to have Vayne and Aureli on the same side to use Last Whisper, um, stuff like that. So 
Um, yeah. He's in a in a really excellent spot. And uh, Lucian did get those buffs too in the uh, last patch, I believe it was. Uh, and they were pretty significant buffs as well. So he's become much more of a reliable uh, early to mid game carry than he was in the past, where he kind of like needed to find Vayne. It was like Vayne or bust for a while with cybernetics, but you've got more flexibility with the better Lucian now. Mm -hmm. He definitely wants a sword though. He's looking for that sword for Infinity Edge ASAP. Oh, Hand of Justice though. I feel like it's such a good item right now. Just in general, you know? Yeah. It is. Um, I think the reservation I would have um, with making Hand of Justice here, and he's thinking about it, um, is if he commits this, then he doesn't have a second item for um, sword. Like if he hits a sword, he doesn't have something to make like a Giant Slayer or Infinity Edge. So I think he holds off and sees if he can hit something else. Yeah. Um, All hopefully. right. Hand of Justice. But really, really good, good for items. Yeah, Frozen Heart on the Mordekaiser. Uh, not bad. So just... Kind of trying to stabilize basically, but wow, that is an early mech for uh, Kuram X, and he's got he's got a Victor two already. What? Wow. Oh, good. He does rolled, he have, I think. Does he have yeah, I guess so. Yeah. It's a twenty gold. Look at this Chaco putting in work. Oh my god, the whole backline. Where'd it go? <laughs> I hope the Chaco just like destroys your backline, and then he just like does the worm on your side of the board. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the most like bad manner thing I've seen. <laughs> So it's hidden passive likelihood to tilt you. That's right. Oh, oh naturally two Aurelias before you're about to roll is like mm, good stuff. Mm -hmm. I just, he needs to get um, uh, he he's in a position to get a sword from Carousel as well. So it's actually really really good. Yeah, first pick. Mm -hmm. uh, delicious milk though, down to twenty seven HP. Uh oh. Yeah. What is what's the state of mind now, Becca? Delicious milk? Okay, I okay, we haven't really been keeping up with milk. Uh let's see. I mean, we all know milk is probably tilted out of his <laughs> mind already. <laughs> but I think he, he he acts like he's tilted, but he never gives up, so I hope I hope he I hope he gets a little bit more luck now. Well you know the the interesting it's interesting like that you mentioned that because that's a legitimate thing where I've known a lot of pro gamers across a lot of different games. And uh, as we see Sphinx deal some big damage with Dugrug. I, I've seen a lot of players where they'll just give this sort of like appearance of feeling really negative, of like being really like down on the game, but it's weirdly motivating to them, you know? Yeah. Where it kind of like to kind of like embrace this negativity sort of like uh, takes the pressure off them in a way. So it's it's interesting that I, I keep seeing like really, really great players kind of like have that attitude in game. Where if you just listen to them without watching the game, it would sound like they're having the worst game in the world every single game, right? But then they manage to find ways to like turn those games into like really, really good ones, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of one of those players. I've had this conversation with him hmm. um, because I'm the type that negativity really, I mean, when I start thinking negatively or when I feel pressure on me, I'll play or perform so much worse. And Milk was saying that he performs so much better when he feels like he's behind or he needs he needs to step it up. So he does so much better under pressure. So yeah, when he's low rolling early, I don't count him out. I've had so many games when he's in my lobby and he's just down to 20 HP and he'll come back and beat me and I'm so salty, but I mean, <laughs> he's just a good player. So I don't think he feels like that. Yeah. Um, so uh, Zugrug actually, I just want to talk about his roll down a little bit. That was actually kind of unfortunate. Um, he, he rolled down, he didn't hit any veins, he didn't hit Aurelia 2, he, he didn't hit 6 Cyber. Uh, so that's actually kind of rough. It wouldn't be a big deal if he had more HP, but mm -hmm. from this spot, it's a little bit scary. Um, and uh, I think at this point, he's just looking to Thieves Glove Aurelia and, and Salvage, um, because he went for a glove instead of going for a sword since he didn't, it didn't hit veins. So a uh, good pivot for, for him um, out of an, an unfortunate roll down. Yeah, and Thieves Gloves on Aurelia item combinations and thieves gloves kind of lets you get around the restriction of two items uh on this galaxy because you get the thieves gloves and then you get the two items besides that anyway so could be strong but let's go uh, check out wow it's pat uh won his lobby in the last game i believe and uh looking looking okay this time around 33 hp so yeah it's a little bit low but i feel like with a couple upgrades this wow. comp could get strong and there's two right there Ooh. that's a shot that's a shot to play the the rum the the nar two over the oh. rumble one. I'm I guess scared. he really values demolitionist. 
I think on one board do you think uh, he'll have by the end of this? That's his third. Yeah. I think I think part of the reason why he hesitated to put Nar in over Rumble is because you want to hit GP and you want to have those items on GP, so you don't want to sell the Nar. That said, it might have been worth just dropping a Rumble for Nar too, um, and keeping the Rumble as a as a mock GP until he hits GP. So I get why he didn't sell Rumble for GP, but he probably should have still played the Nar too over a different Re Rebel. With the change, with the change on the sell sell items or sell gold. I would assume that you would have. He also still has the zigs in the middle of his rebels. This is hmm. just very different from how I would play, so I want to see how it plays out. Wow, there were so many Nars. <laughs> the game just like wants him to have Nar, yeah. but he doesn't want it. Oh, there's a Jinx too. That's big. Just so now to... you have to rearrange those rebels, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, He's just trying to keep as much eco as he can, I guess, mm -hmm. so that he can hit the GP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He has his wing con, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right, Becca. I think he was just trying to keep eco for GP and uh, Jinx too, yeah. and it worked out in in the in the favor of Jinx. So. Uh, I. We... Mm. Well, here's where the three guardian angels are going to come in really handy against this uh, Syndra. Yeah, that feels so really good in this matchup. Yeah. That said, oh my gosh, and eco so strong. That was that was still fairly close. Like he he won it, but like it was really it really was. I think those three guardian angels that. Gave him the time to uh, take up the the other team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now this is kind of an awkward spot for Pat, right? Because the only way he really gets significantly stronger is by hitting GP, and he has very little gold, and he doesn't have health to go nine. So I think he's just gonna probably just keep rolling until he hopefully hits. Um, and yeah, probably has too many GAs at this point. Uh, <laughs> a third yeah. GA is kind of unnecessary. So. Uh, well, it's going to be interesting to see what if he can if he can either get creative and work around not having a GP or just hit. Yeah, well, sometimes it's one of those things where it's like uh, I think it's really important to think about the order in which players received items, right? Because you see these like weird boards with like three GAs, and you're like, oh, that could be like a bunch of other things. But the order in which he received the item components kind of you know pushes him towards that, and uh, eventually. Uh, you know, when we're able to keep better track of that, I think it's going to be really interesting to kind of like help uh, parse players' decision making throughout the game uh, based on the item order as well, the item component order. Mm -hmm. Interesting putting the redemption on Ezreal one. I just feel like Ezreal dies a little later, but like a little too late maybe. But mm. uh, I, I might have put it on. Huh, I guess Yasuo dies a little too early. Rumble has a GA, so it's not worth to put it on him. Mm -hmm. It's a tough choice with this lobby, I think. Actually, yeah. where to put that? Yeah. So, the way that so, happens, it's really unfortunate. Oh, look at Milk at two HP, winning these rounds. He's still oh, in it. <laughs> he is his board strong. Yeah. Board, he turned it around. He turns this into something. What? How do uh, you get this? Timo two, Jin two, Cassiopeia two. Yeah. What in the I mean, world? Unfortunately, you only have two HP, but that's a that's a top four board. Uh, yeah. So uh, it um, could be. So, quick note on the um, on the Ezreal having redemption. I think what he might be thinking is yeah, with rebels, cool. you get the shield, right? So you actually yeah. don't want the redemption to go off too fast because it'll just it, it won't be useful if your shields are still up. Uh, really cool. And know. then Ezreal benefits from the mana, so he gets a slightly faster ult. So that might be what he's thinking because redemption is really tricky to use with rebels, you know. I yeah, agree. that's a really good point. The mana the mana increase is a little more obvious, but yeah, the the rebel shield, not as obvious. Yeah, I did not think of that. Man, I, oh, point. this is so rough. I really would have played the Nar, and I can't. Mm, yeah, man, but he is still alive. Well, mm. for for the next moment or two, anyway. Uh, oops. Uh, oh no! What, what have you done, Becca? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! 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 no. no. Milk still takes eighth. He took the bigger negative HP loss. Oh, that's rough. But, you know, good news for WoW, it's Pat, though. Uh, managed to dodge eighth, at least. Uh, still not happy to go out in seventh, but, you know, it's two points rather than one, so you'll you'll take that, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Keen looking good. good. Yeah, win streaking up at number one, 63 HP remaining. Yeah. So, so um, curious to hear your thoughts, Becca. We've seen several Astro Sniper players now mm -hmm. spike in these games, and it seems to be doing better round after round. Do you think we just start seeing everyone play go for Astro Snipers and then all of a sudden it becomes not that good because it's contested or well, like how do people adapt to this? 
I think you need to play some something with um infiltrators, which would be Meg. Let's. Mm. Uh, I mean. Hmm. I th okay. Yes, I think I think Mech is the answer. No, I think Mech beats beats them as long as. I mean. Yeah, I guess if you focus on Shaco items, maybe. Yeah, and we're also on this galaxy binary where Astro Snipers really does well. Mm -hmm. All your carries yeah. only really need two items, while Meg needs three. So I think, in general, when it's not on this galaxy, Meg will be the answer. Meg is the most consistent and does well against this. Yeah. You need, you need an infiltrator against the snipers, or they do a lot better. Yeah, that's a great point because also Victor has backline access. Um, yeah. True. So yeah. you have two forms of backline yeah. access. Backline is just wrecked and Meg. Hmm. hmm. Well. In the, the snipers look so good. Fly item carousel on uh, five four as we usually see. We'll just have to see what everybody ends up with. I feel like uh, in my own playstyle, mech is the answer has kind of been like the motto for most of the <laughs> week for me. Yeah, that's which is which is fine. I always played mech sorcerer though, so I, I was doing it wrong <laughs> until three point five anyway. So he manages to get. Uh, I was, oh, okay, Sniper. All right, I was wondering if that Ash was going to give him Celestial, but no, it's just going to be three Sniper at this point. But this is kind of that three Sniper variation that we've uh, heard about in the past, too, where you put the Ash in, um, and then you have that extra crowd control, basically, with the arrow. Um, it's not huge, but it, it can be impactful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel, I kind of feel like um, Ash is here until you hit Lulu, but in the meantime, he probably would prefer Chrono, probably prefer, mm -hmm. like, a Blitz here. Um, but yeah, I think into once you hit Lulu, the Celestial is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, and this is sort of like a transition, but he, he's in such a dominant position, I think, right now. Um, oh, and I, as I say this, of course, he loses, so. No. <laughs> is that? What have you done? <laughs> he's scaling. It's okay. It's all good. He hasn't rolled, in fairness, so. Yeah, he's got a ton of gold. He's got yeah. 54 HP remaining, so he's, he's fine. Oh, two Urgots. That is hard to say no to. Yeah. I am the type of person who needs to immediately sell those meeps on the bench. <laughs> Me Isn't too. But I need them off. It's too distracting. It doesn't For even sure. matter if it's level 9. Yeah, you need to get rid of those meeps. <laughs> meeps must go. That. Hmm. It's interesting. So he rolled it, He rolled part of his gold, I guess, until what did he hit that made him stop rolling? I'm not uh, sure. He actually... Yeah. Hit a, a bard one and um, replaced it, his bard two, and put the Trojan on Ash. Yeah, so I guess he figured that's enough. It adds to the crowd control. Uh, it's been a lot of rounds where it's just Teemo and Jin surviving, so now with a little bit quicker Ash arrow, mm -hmm. he's getting a little bit more sustain on the front line. And I think you can kind of see that here. It's also yeah. a good creep round, so he probably just doesn't want to go too low on eco, so he stopped. True. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, I... Oh, go ahead, Doa. Oh, no, I was just going to say he sold the meeps, so there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> good, man. Yeah. That's key. Yeah, I guess he was just rolling to search and see if he can make a small upgrade, um, preserve a little HP, and still have enough gold to to hit like two star five cost. I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was that was interesting. That's a, not a decision I would have made, but I like it in hindsight. So he's not Trojan is way well. Bard was completely useless with Trojan at that point. So. Yeah. Right. What do you think about this last whisper? Where do you think that goes? In this comp, because normally you'd put it on like a, a, a Jin maybe or something, but like you can't in this game because it's binary star. Probably Ash. One that auto attacks a lot. Yeah. yeah. I guess probably just Ash since she's because she's grouped near Teemo and Jin, she's hitting the, the uh, similar targets to them. True. So it's kind of like having a Teemo or or not Teemo, but a Jin with it. So I think um, yeah. not making the Celestial spot in case he gets a fawn off the next carousel because he's in a good spot. He's not that yeah. Mm. yeah, I guess. I think you're right. And I guess he's also like, I might hit Lulu here. Um, and you don't, you really don't, you're not going to play four Celestial. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, that's, it seems like that's been kind of by the wayside. Oh, he's leaving himself open for the uh, the Gen 3 and the Teemo 3. Yeah. And no, two Gen 2s. We're, go we're going old school here. Yeah. No, 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 not Bard, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely the, definitely, <laughs> the uh, definitely the Raka. Bard does not benefit from that, <laughs> not right now. No, 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 <laughs> please no. <laughs> Armel's about to like jump through the computer and like uh, pop out on from like key and speakers or something. Like, no, not the Bard. <laughs> Takes out Zugrug. 
who finishes in fifth, just outside of that top four. Uh, so we have our top four for this lobby. It's going to be Kiyun, Sphinx, Kurum X, and Cottontail. No bias, but Sphinx, he he took uh, an eighth round one, just to Becca's point about, like, you know, you can still recover. Took a first, and now is in top four position again. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, really strong rally from him. Tito! Sorry. The Tito, <laughs> he needs to pick it up. I'm sure he will. Will he? He must. Like he's he's yeah. going for team of three, right? He's got it. He also mm, so you skip Nar a lot. A lot of the players just skip Nar because Mystic is so good, especially mm -hmm. with like all the players usually. But it's so hard to not play the Nar. Yeah. Playing Nar is such a useless unit at this point. Yeah, like you'd rather put in like a Karma or something, right? But it's. I guess part of it is that this uh, four Vanguard variant has become so much yeah. more popular, you know, yeah, rather than like the that. Vanguard brawler kind of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, his opponents, they're all heavy armor or heavy AD. Mm -hmm. okay. <gasps> He's one away! He's one oh. away! Hit! Where is it? Just Where hit. is the Timo? I, that Nar, that Nar gave me a, a mini heart attack for a second. <laughs> that was a Timo. So I could do. Astronaut, Astronaut Nard looks like Tito. A little bit. <laughs> Passes up the Soraka, too. Interesting. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah, Thresh 2 is huge. Yeah. His bench is not that supportive. I mean, he has Teemos, I guess, can get pulled in, and a Lulu, but... Yeah. So, I mean, he has Shojin, so that's actually kind of amazing, now. Would you just sell the gym here? Oh, so that no. The uh, Shaco, no. oh, Shaco triggers me, man. Mm. Watch the Shaco delete a Thrush 2 with some help. Oh, hey. Still oh. trying that. I around. think you sell the Jin. Oh, man. Oh. Okay. I agree. Uh, I think you sell the Jin here. You're two Jins away from a Jin 3. I think like it's it's so hard not to. Oh, yeah, actually, you're right. I forgot there's a second Jin on bench. Yeah, I, I forgot about that for a second too. But he had, yeah, he was playing two Gen twos on the board because I, you heard me too. I was like, oh, I like, wait a second. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, he got the fawn. So he was just waiting for the fawn. Ah, uh, the possibility of the fawn, and then he well, can always pick the celestial. So picking up the loot is not important. Is important, but me, I definitely would have done it. Might have been wrong. Uh, also, Karam just picked up. Did he oh, not? That's oh. huge. Yeah. Oh, he big, sold it so fast. Big GP2, Chalice on Victor makes a lot of sense here. Mm -hmm. uh, Sphinx out in third. So we're, we got our... Oh, team 3 Kuhn just hit it. Uh, sidebar just showed us that. So there's oh, a team boy. There he is. Kurum X. Uh, really back. interesting, though. Because as Becca noted, Infiltrators are good versus um, Backline, and Victor's good. So we'll see. I mean, I think... I feel like Timo just cleans this up. Um, especially because Shape was not on that side. But yeah, we'll look, he does. Okay, that was disgusting. Oh, the, the GP didn't get to ult before GA popped. Yeah, Timo's okay. actually just one-shotting everything. Yeah, that's that's the thing. It's like, yeah, get, come at me now, because Timo's just going to one-shot you with the room. Kuramax out, and that's going to be Kiyun taking the win. <laughs> You're bad. You're bad. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Top banner. Top banter. Yeah, maximum luck. Oh, no skill. <laughs> Kiyun. <laughs> Kiyun, though, uh... Getting the team of three, a rare treat, but uh, piloting a strong sniper's board uh, either way. We're back now. Keen has uh, rejoined us. What, what do you think, man? Uh, what, what do you think about that last game? It's really awesome to see. Uh, a lot of these guys are playing without the NAR, which is not something I would personally make. Becca made a comment earlier about learning a lot of different things. And me as well, I feel like it was really cool to see players find different ways to play the Vanguard Astro Sniper, which I had previous, I'd, I'd shelled it for the past week, and it makes me want to get back onto the ladder and go for, you know, a, a seventh or eighth with my own variant of the Astro Sniper again. I feel like I could do it. Yeah. I'm familiar I, with that variant. I agree. I actually, <laughs> yeah. hard agree. Um, fitting the Nard is so hard, especially because Mystic is so strong mm. with, with all yeah. the medicals. So it's nice to see people play the one, the Bard one at level nine. It makes me <laughs> There are more options for me. Yeah. It's interesting. We, we've seen NAR priority be pretty low in general. I mean, we, we watched Pat's perspective for a bit, and he, he had the options of being a NAR too. He passed down it twice, I think. Um, so I think the thing with NAR is uh, late game, even when he's two-star, he can be a little bit inconsistent. Sure. Um, so sometimes you don't really feel like you're getting value for gold, particularly if you can't itemize them. So um, yeah, it's pretty interesting to see uh, 
a really dominant forecast or previously dominant forecast fall in priority. Well, it's just a good ladder, uh, a good lobby read rather right now too, where like a lot of times, you know, traditionally that Astro Sniper's build has had two vanguards, two brawlers, right? In terms of Blitzcrank Gnar and then, you know, two vanguards, one of them being Nautilus, where like now, you know, if you see a lobby where it is more AD heavy, then you can just go that four vanguard variation and give up the Gnar and like, I've been a big NAR fan since the NAR of set one. So it's it's tough for me to like not run that unit as well because it's super fun. But like there's a lot of reasons to go the four Vanguard version too. And I think that was a, a good read on uh Kuhn's part in this lobby. I think that's a great point, Noah. Like, would you prefer to go first? Or would you rather just see the NAR get a really juicy ultimate off and knock everybody it's in tough. the demo? You know, it's a it's a tough call, but I really although I will say, NAR tilts me sometimes because I'm playing snipers, right? And I know that, like, that build doesn't need the distance of snipers to do the work because it's all about the AOE damage from the shrooms, right? But, like, when NAR sweeps everybody right in front of my snipers, I'm like, NAR, <laughs> don't you understand how snipers work? But, you know, you can't blame him. Or <laughs> He's enraged. Or something, and he just, like, swipes everyone away from your GP ult, and you're just like, mm, <laughs> I don't know about you, Nar. Yeah. Ooh, Stocks won a lobby. Nice. Yeah, our uh, our Game 3 lobby winners mismatch Socks, Kiyun, and Raza. So another player from Oceania taking a win in uh, one of our lobbies. So coming up, and uh, this is going to mean, I think, like, with the results we've had in the last two games, the the order of uh, the breakdown of where players are at points-wise is starting to uh, kind of coalesce a little bit. It's it's going to be, I think, a pretty close finish now. Yeah, I actually saw the mm -hmm. final boards for both of these, uh, the Raza and Miss, Mismatch Sax. Sax actually played the Slash Bros and took first with that, and then Raza oh. was playing another Astro Sniper variant. It actually ended up beating a, a pretty... High rolled Kiba legendary comp at the end there. I thought I was very surprised to see it win there, but it was he was actually running NAR. So those hmm. of you who are thinking about cutting the NAR out, uh, not necessarily always the best play. It's just I think interesting to see these players just flex and play what the best possible board is. Mm -hmm. You know, versus the Kiba comp, that makes a lot of sense though, because you're gonna see a lot of protectors on that side. So a big, long lasting crowd control alt is gonna prevent those shields from coming up on the protectors and gonna give you that little extra window to take them down. So I, I like it just all about reading the lobby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Keen, what what do you think of the rise of Astro Snipers? Um we we you know we didn't see it dominate that much in round one, but rounds two and three it seems to be becoming more and more prevalent. So do you think that's an adaptation or people are just realizing that's super good? Or what do you think of that? Well, I think you guys touched on it really well on the broadcast, which is on that map on Binary Star. Uh, and also uh, one of the other maps, I believe, was Binary Star for this round as well. Uh, and so that's kind of what happens on that map is because, like you mentioned, the mech needs the three items. Uh, he needs three items. A lot of different comps. I actually don't personally like playing Cybers on this map, uh, contrary to what you had said, because I feel like Cyber is a comp that kind of wants to go nine. Otherwise, it's very difficult to place highly. And mm -hmm. so when you're on binary star, it's very difficult to make hold. And you also sometimes just don't get the right item. Like, like, like we saw that Milk had the uh, the double Negatron start that doesn't really give you too many options. I think in those type of situations, uh, it can be really difficult to do something on, with Cyber when you're just not getting any items. And Binary Star just doesn't give you the extra items like Super Dense or Trove or Galactic Armory would. I, sure. I personally don't like playing Cybers on that map. But like, I, I was just kind of curious to push you a little more because you, you had mentioned that uh, you do like playing it on that map. Do you find that you struggle with Ecom? Like, how do you actually make it to 9 on, on that map? Um, I think the reason why I, I prefer it on um, Binary Star is because the way I think of it is every comp kind of gets weaker on Binary Star as a function of just not, not having as many items. Um, but with Cybers, you just have multiple people who can carry. Like, so, so you have Vayne who can carry, Aurelia who can carry, Echo who can carry. And Feast Glove is also in incredibly good on Cybers to begin okay. with. So I generally find that even though it drops off in power relative to other maps, it doesn't drop off as much as certain maps where you still need a uh, three item carry. Um, so that's what I generally find. Hmm. All right, Becca, be the tiebreaker. What What do you think? Cyber is yay or nay for Binary Star? I don't like Cyber. So I'm <laughs> gonna say nay. No, uh, but, uh, I mean, I think I think I mean Cyber shouldn't be bad on the galaxy. Um, I just I think everyone's. I mean, everyone's kind of like is predisposition to think that 
it's a good it's good on this galaxy so it's a little more contested so obviously that's going to make it worse on that galaxy anyway mm -hmm. so there's like a little bit of a detriment to cybers anyway because everyone else wants to play it and then the game's supposed to be self-balancing so if everyone's trying to play cybers on that galaxy it's going to be weaker um, yeah. While Astro Snipers is just so strong on any galaxy, and they really don't, the carries don't need three items at all. So I, I like Astro Snipers. I mean, ugh. Oh. All right. There you go. No, it's that... cool that they're playing it with Bard 1. I'm still stuck on that. I, would, I really haven't been doing that. And I've always felt stressed trying to make that decision between playing the Nard, Nar um, versus playing Mystics. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just a little reassuring seeing the top players play it that way. Or not, like depending on what they need in the lobby. I think the fact that it's so hard to like decide that things is just like it speaks really well to like the state of of the game and the state of the patch right now. And that like there should be a lot of like hard decisions about the finer points of different comps. You know, like it shouldn't be like the same thing every single game. It's like you're playing this comp, it's always going to be these units. There's mm -hmm. like the core stuff you know that you need, but it seems like all of nearly all the top comps. I would say, uh, with the exception of like maybe Blade Masters, has like little tweaks you can do, and even Blade Masters you can, depending on if you get the Blade Master spatula item or not. So it is neat that we've got like flexibility within all of the top comps as well. But yeah, I think that's a good example of that. Yeah, yeah cool. I'm hoping we see um, some of the more niche comps. Like it would be cool to see a battle cast game, like a really cleanly played battle cast game. The no. problem with battle cast is such a narrow set of conditions. That make it makes sense like probably you want to be on trade sector um but yeah keen was there any battle cast on the trade sector game uh, i didn't catch it uh, it's, I, I couldn't quite catch the whole game uh, based on the perspective i was getting but uh, if there was it didn't seem like it placed particularly high i do in terms of niche comps i do believe i saw a space pirate comp it might have actually taken first in one of the, the lobbies in the previous round i'd have to go right. and double check that nice so, huh. i know doa was asking i believe for that earlier so <laughs> pirates. I mean, there well, was a shredder first place. I can't. I just can't. <laughs> I want to. I want to see it. I want to see how they did it. Shredder. You know, if you, I think if you just roll like a bunch of Zayas early, you can just be like, all right, I'm just gonna play the, you know, slow roll at five to try to find it, and then, it, right. But so we're gonna take a look at uh, mismatch socks comp for his uh, game win here. And uh, this looks like uh, looks like Blade Masters. <laughs> looks uh, like Master E3, guys. So I'm Blade guessing he was against Mech because he's he in the front line mm. or someone with Infiltrator. I okay. Think the, the final matchup was against Mech. Uh, I know, though, you've been talking about this all day. Would you say uh, the Blade chose him here? <laughs> definitely chose him. Like, look at those items on Yi. <laughs> look at the items on Shen, even. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. He had the D2 uh, by stage four already with the perfect items when I was tuning in. He was sitting, I believe, at second or third wow. for HP. And so when you're sitting, at, and he still had 50 gold. So when you're sitting at level seven with 50 gold or 40 gold, uh, and, and you have perfect item D2 with this kind of comp, you just slow roll to uh, level eight and then to level nine, which he did here. And once you hit nine with D3, uh, the game's basically unlosable. This feels like one of the highest skill caps. Comps in the game, I don't know, uh, Curious, Becca, and Primal, if you agree, if this is maybe the highest, like, if everything hits, this comp just beats everything? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think outside of some, like, niche scenario where someone has a three-star four cost, um, I think on, on average, Master Yi, once he's online, there's, just, there's nothing that beats him, because he has true damage, and he has multi-hit, right? Um, so he's really, really, it doesn't feel counterable once he's there, but obviously it's hard to get there. Um, Someone was making a point, I think it was Becca, around mech and positioning here. I'm curious what that was, because I don't play Yi reroll much. So why why would you frontline the uh, Yi here? Um, because um, because of the infiltrators. And um, actually, um, I, so when I asked that question, Sox actually answered in chat. He said, yeah, there were like six mech players in my lobby. So he had the Yi in the front line protect him against any other random random infiltrator um, crits. All right. 